Hi, in one of my earlier videos on taxation of mutual funds in India, which you can also view by clicking on the right top side of your screen or by clicking the link in the description below, I had referred to the benefit of indexation in the case of long-term capital gains for debt mutual funds. Quite a few of us are usually not aware of this concept of indexation and that is exactly why we shall be looking at it in more detail in this video. Here after the initial introduction we shall be looking at what is indexation followed by the concept of cost inflation index. Then we shall understand how to apply the benefits of indexation after which we shall be looking at a few illustrations and finally the conclusion. Hi, I am Tutap Narula, investment consultant and educator and if you like my video, please put in your likes and subscribe to my channel. Also, ring that bell to get all future notifications from this channel and put in your feedbacks and comments. Further, put in your questions in the comment box and I shall get back to you on the same. So let's begin with exactly what is indexation. As per Indian income tax laws, indexation is the process through which you adjust the purchase price of an investment to account for inflation between the time you purchased and sold that investment. This time is referred to as the holding period. In simpler words, indexation allows you to increase the purchase price depending on the inflation rate in the economy so that gain or loss can be estimated in real terms. As the purchase price is increased, it will result in lower gain and finally will result in lower tax liability. The indexation benefit is available to mutual funds, bonds, gold and real estate. Next, we come to the concept of cost inflation index or CII. Indexation rates are calculated using this cost inflation index. The CII for the last 22 years is shown on the screen and will be referred to further in this video. The CII is a figure issued by the central government every year that represents the year's inflation. If in a year inflation was high, the CII number would be high and vice versa. We now look at how to apply the benefits of indexation to mutual funds. Indexation benefits are applied to long-term capital gains or LTCG in debt mutual funds. Such capital gains are taxed at 20% after using indexation benefit. And to fall under LTCG, the funds must be held for 36 months or more. As per the indexation benefit, the cost of acquisition or the original investment amount is indexed to account for inflation over the holding period. And the formula for calculating the indexed cost of acquisition or ICOA is the original cost of acquisition multiplied by the CII for the year of sale divided by the CII of the year of purchase. A point to be noted here is that if the investment was made prior to 2001, then the year of 2001-2002 would be applicable as the year of purchase. To provide more clarity, let's look at some illustrations. In the first example, the investment is purchased at a price of Rs 1 lakh in the financial year 16-17. This is sold at a price of Rs. 1,25,000 in the financial year 1920. The resultant capital gain before indexation is Rs. 25,000. Now since the investment has been held for more than 36 months, indexation benefit can be applied. For this, we first refer to the CII for the years 1920 and 1617. The values are 289 and 264. Next, we calculate the ICOA. For this, we multiply 1 lakh by 289, which is the CII for the year of sale, divided by 264, which is the CII for the purchase year. This gives us a result of 1 lakh 9,470. So the capital gains after indexation is 1 lakh 25,000 minus 1 lakh 9,470, which is equal to 15,530. So the tax liability at 20% before indexation is Rs 5000 and after indexation is Rs 3106 which is a reduction of 38% of your tax liability. In the next illustration, we look at two investments of Rs 5 lakh each in the year 2014. 
However, while one is sold after two years in 2016, the other is sold after 36 months in 2017. So while one is a long-term capital gain or LTCG, the other is a short-term capital gain or STCG. For purposes of simplification, the sale value in both cases is 6,29,856. Now let's look at the workings. In the case of STCG, since no indexation benefit is applied, the cost of acquisition is the same, which is Rs 5 lakh, and the capital gains is Rs 1 lakh 29,856. The taxation rule for STCG is that it has to be taxed as per your income tax slab, which is assumed at 30%. Accordingly, the tax payable is Rs 1 lakh 29,856 multiplied by 30%, which is equal to 38,957. In the case of LTCG, indexation is applicable. So the first step is to check the CII for both the years, which is 240 for 2014 and 272 for 2017. Next, we calculate the ICOA, which is 5 lakh multiplied by 272 divided by 240, which gives us 5,66,667. Accordingly, the capital gains is Rs. 6,29,856 minus 566,667, which gives us 63,189. And 20% income tax on this amount comes to Rs. 12,638. This means that there is a tax saving of 38,957 minus 12,638, which is equal to 26,319. In percentage terms, the saving is 68%. In the last illustration, let us look at a comparison between LTCG in debt funds and income earned from a fixed deposit or FD. In both options, the amount invested is Rs 10 lakh each in 2015 at a rate of 7.5%. The FD is for a term of 5 years and the mutual funds are also sold exactly after 5 years in 2020. The realization value, again in both cases, is 14,35,629, which gives us a return of 4,35,629. In the FD, the tax to be paid is as per your income tax slab, which is assumed at 30%. So the tax payable in the case of FD is Rs. 1,30,689. Now, in the case of LTCG in debt funds, we first calculate the ICOA. The CII in 2015 is 254 and in 2020 is 301. Accordingly, the ICOA is 10 lakhs multiplied by 301 divided by 254, which is equal to 11 lakhs 85,039. So the adjusted capital gains is 14 lakh 35,629 minus 11 lakhs 85,039, which is equal to 2 lakh 50,590. And the tax payable at 20% on this is 50,118. This is a reduction of 80,571 rupees or 62% in terms of percentage. As you can see from the above examples, indexation can bring down your taxable income and eventually your tax paid by a huge margin. In the second and third example, the tax paid on STCG in debt funds and fixed deposits is 30%. But when we look at the tax paid for the same return values, under LTCG, the tax paid is 9.7% and 11.5%. Your portfolio should definitely have debt funds owing to multiple benefits like yielding predictive returns, bringing stability and providing easy liquidity. Indexation is a powerful tool to save tax when it comes to investing in debt mutual funds. It reduces your inflationary gains that take a toll on your returns by attracting heavy tax. But remember, you need to stay invested for at least 3 years to take advantage of this benefit. Thank you all for watching my videos and once again, I would request you to put in your likes and subscribe to my channel.